Hello, today I realized that it's been a very long time since I drew something on a canvas and I found this cute heart-shaped one, so this is what I'm gonna be doing today. So before I began painting on a canvas, I wanted to see how the picture would be positioned. After that, I printed out the picture to make sure I won't mess it all up. When I'm drawing on paper, I don't have a problem painting and erasing thousands of times until I get it right, but on canvas, it's so much more problematic because the pencil never truly gets erased in the first place and then if you keep drawing and erasing multiple times, it just turns into a dark dark smudge, which makes me mad. So this time I decided to cheat a little, I guess. So I printed out the picture and using an X-Acto knife, I made little cuts on the lines of the eyes, glasses, face outline, mouth and nose, and then used these cuts to draw little lines to give me a better idea of where everything needs to be located. I then messed it all up anyway. So for the eyes, I literally cut out the glasses, eyeballs and pupils to trace the area where they need to be. I don't know if that's like illegal in the art world or something, but I really wanted this painted to look as good as possible without doing too much work. <laughs> I could have spent much more time on this to get it right for sure, but um, I just wanted to do it quickly. But I'm not a professional artist, obviously, and um, like I won't be selling this, so I guess it's okay. I don't know. When the pencil draft was ready, I put it aside for like a week or so, because I was so afraid to start painting it and ruin it. This canvas smells so much like fish, like canned tuna. I, I literally have a can of it in my fridge and for some time when I first started drawing I was like is, is this me? <laughs> Am I the problem? But then I left the canvas to sit on a table for a couple of days and the now the room smells like fish and if you smell this area of this like wood or whatever this is this seems like it's made literally out of tuna but I like how the drawing looks, so let's uh, ruin it with my terrible painting skills. <laughs> so when I finally build up enough courage to start painting, I first outlined everything in black, except for the hair. The ends of his hair I outlined in dark purple. I also painted his clothes because it was super easy, just all black basically. And um, since I felt a little bit more adventurous today, I decided to also paint his eyes and uh, made a terrible mistake. <laughs> Um, so I have these beautiful watercolors that already have the colors I need without me needing to mix anything. And I have acrylic gouache, which I decided to use only for his black clothes and his skin. I don't know what my thought process was. I didn't even say there was none. Um, I literally just saw pretty colors and I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm using that. <laughs> which was a bad idea, but we'll get back to that in a minute. So I drew the outline and the eyes and I'm honestly in love with how it looks. I don't think I've ever drawn anything this good, like on a canvas at least. So the next milestone for me was painting the background, which was relatively easy because it's just one color, but it was very time consuming because I had to paint by the hair and make sure I don't paint over the hair outline or even make the outline line smaller by covering a part of it with the paint for, for the background, doesn't make any sense. There were so many little nooks and crannies I have to be very careful with, but it was a very satisfying process. After I painted this, I took another small break because I was so scared to paint the skin and the shadows, but then I did it and I'm very happy with the skin color I mixed. And um, then when I got to the shadows, well, at first I was like, oh my god, it looks nothing like a shadow. It looks like he fell chin down into some Nesquik or something. But now I actually quite like it. I mean, if you didn't see the process, I feel like you wouldn't even question the color of it or anything, I hope. <laughs> So 
so after that I painted the purple part of his hair um, it's not shadow right it, his hair has a gradient from white to purple um, well, whatever it is I painted it and I love how it looks And the next stage is one of the two last ones I was most terrified of. Painting the glass pieces, which turned out pretty much as I expected, very bad. But I didn't really have any high hopes for it in the first place, so I'm pretty happy with whatever this is. And um, now to the final boss, um, who I was sure would ruin it all. And spoiler, it did. <laughs> the glasses. Even in the beginning, I was like, why the heck am I choosing a picture with almost transparent sunglasses, which I have no idea how to paint not on a tablet, where I can just adjust the opacity. But I assured myself I'll, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. So here we are. Uh, my idea was to take black watercolor paint, dilute it with water up until the point where it's more water than paint, and then paint over the eyes, which in my head was supposed to leave an almost transparent shade which I still think sounds like a solid plan, but it, it didn't work here for so many reasons. <laughs> well, for two reasons, actually. The first one, I stupidly enough used watercolors for the eyes, which are activated by water, and I smudged it all with my very first brush stroke. And second, diluted watercolors do not look good on canvas and or on top of another paint, apparently. After my first layer, it looked like Gojo was wearing those TV protection glasses my grandma used to wear in like the early 2000s. But honestly, it looks so much better on camera than it did in real life. Like, if, if it wasn't me doing it and I had just seen the video, I'd be mad that they didn't leave it alone after the first layer because it, it doesn't look that terrible. But in, in reality, it, it, it was terrible. And the more layers I added, the worse it looked. So in the end, I just gave up and covered it all in black. So not only did his beautiful eyes get covered, which first of all, I didn't even expect to turn out this good. I was kind of proud of myself a little bit. And they were probably my favorite part of the whole painting because they matched with the background and everything looked so perfect until I added the glasses. Uh, but anyway, Gorgia with glasses is also a cool look, I guess, but I wish I left the painting without it. So here's the final result. Let me know what you think and uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you later. Bye.